So obviously, um, at the moment, it's uh, menswear fashion week. Men, men's fashion week. Um, at the moment, everyone's in Milan. It doesn't feel like it though. Again, I think it's because the pandemic. The vibes are off, so it feels like no one's really talking about much of the stuff anymore. It's kind of hard to justify talking about, you know, um, five thousand pound bomber jackets when people are legitimately struggling to keep the lights on. But again, we have to keep moving. We have to keep um, some semblance of normality. And here's my attempt at it. And obviously, talking about COVID all the time is completely boring. So let's just move on with this. So this is a Alex, Alex, Alex or Alex. How does he pronounce it? He pronounce it Alex. I think he pronounce it Alex. But basically, this is a Matthew Williams brand who is now um, head, obviously, at Givenchy. But Alex has basically been the brand that spearheaded his career and basically gave him the opportunity to get that Givenchy job. And it felt like for a brief period, whilst he was still juggling, kind of coming to grips with working for a big luxury fashion house and getting to grips with maybe being, you know, kind of living in two locations at once you know traveling to paris and whatnot maybe i don't know where is it Givenchy's studios in paris i'm pretty sure they are i'm not too sure but don't hold me on that but regardless he had to kind of juggle you know carrying two brands and obviously still his namesake um matthew no mw is it mm no mw yeah m what is it yeah i think it's mmw the thing he does with nike so he's got three projects happening at the same time and it felt like for a small period of time there was a time when Alex had to kind of the quality of Alex had to dip a bit and it was you know, understandable because if you get the Givenchy job you kind of want to put your all into it you want to put every bit of inspiration and ideas that you have into that kind of big job because as soon as you get it you could lose it right away and again because of some of the stuff I've been seeing on Twitter and people kind of not responding well to the designs even though I thought a lot of it was really good and maybe he was the only person so far you know post uh, Ricardo t has been able to kind of revive Givenchy in a kind of notable cultural way um, I don't think anybody was talking about Givenchy prior to Matthew um, introduction which is basically part of the reason why houses like Givenchy decide to hire people who aren't maybe as traditionally fashion experienced as a Matthew Williams because he's a you know again, cultural zeitgeist somebody in the ilk of the virtual Abloh somebody who's kind of not trained kind of trained unconventionally in fashion maybe he didn't go to fashion school but spending enough time being around people dressing them you know being part of different scenes being part of collective every, all this sort of stuff working with Kanye uh, it kind of added to his overall arsenal and now when he kind of presents Alex it's maybe not as refined as something that you would get from a let's say a conventional fashion designer like a JW Hansen but there's still some ideas there and some kind of thought that could kind of I think elevate it to a level that's good enough to basically attract a new customer base and then once he gets his feet under the table all that kind of fine tuning of the fashion with a capital F can happen as he's kind of builds his relationships with all the ateliers and people working there and seamstress and whatnot and pattern cars I think over time so it's no coincidence now that I feel like this might have been Alex's or Alex's strongest collection maybe as opposed to the, the first one because I thought the first one was amazing in terms of how hard and fast he came in like just showing okay this is what I'm about but I think in terms of confidence which is what I think this has given me um the Alix um for 2022 sorry the, the, the Alix 422 menswear collection I thought this is his most confident and it's no surprise also again working you know with Givenchy doing that in tandem it probably gave him a lot of confidence he probably feels like his ideas are somewhat validated because you get the little because as much as I hate all of the kind of um as much as I hate people that lick people from fashion's asses and you know the sucking up and stuff there's still something that has to be said for feeling quite honored and proud that somebody that was able that was kind of got their start from print screening t-shirts can have the ability to design for a place like Givenchy right where they can maybe say hey we trust you with our house we trust you with our codes we trust you with our archive to basically revive us and give us a chance to basically communicate with this new generation of customers or whatnot right um or basically tap into whatever's going on now in the cultural zeitgeist and I think there is something to be said for that, to be feeling proud of it. I'm like, cool, look, I started from just, you know, popping letters on a hat or cutting up jeans. And now suddenly here I am making this stuff. I mean, it must be amazing. So again, no coincidence that it's kind of seeped back in. Because again, like I said, when he got the Givenchy job, I thought Alex quality kind of dipped. And now it's kind of coming back up again, which is similar to what happened with um, Demna too, when he was when he kind of went from Balenciaga. So when he went from Vetemont to Balenciaga and you're still doing Vetemont, then obviously he quit doing Vetemont, but for a while he was doing it or for maybe not one maybe a couple of seasons and the quality of it man wasn't that great either because he was obviously pouring his heart into Balenciaga which makes sense when you get that kind of job you have to do it but I thought this was made definitely one of Matthew Williams most confident collections that he's done for Alex so far let's quickly check over the pictures and then we can read the review um, again here just great stuff as an opening look 
the colors are amazing so are the shapes loads of cool inspirations and looks i love this kind of funnel neck thing that he has going on this styling tip on most of the jackets i'm not sure if it's a hood or if it's a scarf or if it's something that gets attached but you know matthew's into a lot of modular sort of things that you can kind of take apart and put onto other things similar to what like samuel ross has. i think there's some surprise there's not been a collaboration so far between samuel ross of a cold war and matthew williams of alix i think those brands would do great together um they kind of have a similar sort of aesthetic to me there's a lot of thought that goes into everything they do from the zippers to the way the armholes are like everything kind of there's a lot of thought and again i think over time both of them would i think sam ross is a good example once he got the money and he got the better maybe access to i would say tools or whatever it may be right the level of his presentation upped as well but you could still see um, an ember of that in the first collections that they'd done when they were spray painting air force ones and dip dyeing shit i think you could definitely see it from there too but i think i really really like this i'm not going to lie i think this is really strong alix full 2022 um the only disappointing thing some of the men's looks for the most part are all black i would like to see a lot more color maybe included in some of the men's looks but i'm sure most of this stuff will be made when it's produced in iterations of different colors but it would have been nice to see different stuff lined up and you know so you could see what it looks like in terms of the black stuff but shoes like this I think we'll see Matthew wearing these on his Instagram page, these new shoes. They're basically, it looks like his interpretation of the Balenciaga, no, of the Bottega Veneta puddle boot. But instead of doing what um, Ambush did from Yoon, Yoon from Ambush, sorry, um, she did those dog awful flipping copycats of the Bottega Veneta puddle boots that weren't really, you know, they, they weren't even her own version she just basically added a sock liner to it it's a bit embarrassing but at least with these these are actually look completely different they're semi sort of inspiration in terms of being what's it um somewhere 3d molded right in that respect but they just look different they look a little bit more substantial they've definitely got um the hint of what alex, um, alex and matthew williams is about um in terms of them being i don't know what you say technologically involved so sort of like sci-fi looking they kind of remind me of the boots that they wear in the expanse on amazon which you definitely should check out if you're a fan of sci-fi but 100 percent, i love all of it um again when, when the addition of color it always looks great the shorts over the trousers or the shorts attached to the trousers I'm not too sure really really good stuff i think someone mentioned that this look is inspired by an archive piece from uh, maison margella again but done with confidence and again maybe a little nod to margella too with these sort of like big toe covering sandals i'm not really a fan of them but actually i can be a fan of them because usually my if, even i've got butter feet and all my toes are horrible my big toe is usually the most um butters one so if i can hide my big toe similar to how people when they when they wear face marks nowadays you basically look more attractive right because you hide maybe this bit that makes you look older and everyone's mostly got decent eyes and nose shape if you kind of cover it up so maybe that's a good little way if you want to cover up some of your ugly um, toe features you get those kind of big toe covers so maybe that's a double on tundra reference my gel on the top my gel on the bottom not too sure in terms of the major tabby boots i mean but yeah look at the layering and some of the funnel neck stuff this is so good that's a great look again i think it's a scarf right maybe it's a scarf or maybe it's a detachable thing i'm not too sure but everything about it is great and again you're always going to get great outwear pieces from matthew williams when it comes to alix he never misses when it comes to that stuff and his collaborations with Montclair to the stuff he does in line it's always great and again another collaboration that i'm surprised he ain't done yet maybe it's because he collaborated with Montclair, but i think alix would be great to do a collaboration with stone island or cp company that would be flipping awesome imagine what that jacket would look like like sorry there'd be a lot of tech involved in there too like this this is just awesome this is the kind of wear that you this is the kind of outfit that you'd wear to go rob someone's house and then go to the club later do you know what i mean let's <laughs> stop it with black air force ones on the feet this looks so hard man so 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 good like come on man this is this is a man with confidence this is a man who's got you know he's feeling himself you know newly divorced doing push-ups in his little paris apartment you know his, his phone his dms are probably crazy you know what i mean just imagine it right um yeah and he's one of the rare fashion designers especially male ones who kind of has who kind of gets the uh for, from what i've seen on twitter he seems to get a lot of first in from the male and the female fans out there so he's definitely living his good life out there but yeah this is fucking great man really really good seamless zips there too like awesome all of it is awesome and definitely 100 percent one of the most confident collections i've seen him do again this is so good man this is so so good maybe again maybe it's the demna influence too you know demna's operating on such a high frequency now at the moment and you know he's friends i guess with everybody or similar sort of age 
and he obviously pulls a lot of reference from the kind of street quote unquote world you would say and maybe some people are like you know what let's flex our muscles he's basically validating everyone's taste in streetwear by presenting it on a luxury level right because he got padded flannels he's selling hoodies for 600 pounds t-shirts for 400 essentially he's kind of legitimizing everybody's taste levels in streetwear so if you're doing something great in streetwear you can basically feel a bit more confident and pop your shit because you know guys like that are also pulling information for pulling inspiration for the stuff that you do but look at that look at that as a look look at this jesus christ whoever's doing the styling too again bravo to you whoever you are you are absolutely smashing it and the fact that they make all their menswear shows include a bit of women in it too helps to kind of give the show a little bit of extra edge the women's stuff looks way more tailored and better form fitting than it did prior even though i'm pretty sure am i not mistaken to say that alix started off as a women's brand first then it did the men's out after i'm pretty sure it did so maybe he, this is a bad statement to say but yeah it just looks all great man like look at that that is a bad boy outfit i'm not sure if that's a hood or that's a thing but that just looks so good those boots are going to be so popular i'm definitely going to attempt to purchase them they look so great you know the kind of boots that look good with all pants like oh god almighty substantial to the max look at that that is a fantastic look man nah those those one toe shoe um heel things are pretty decent let's not lie i kind of take it back even if you've got an ugly other toe that you, you definitely need to wear them they look so good but yeah alix 4 20 like, like that's that's a brilliant look the, that's phoebe file already isn't it that's an easy phoebe file already outfit he did really well man big up matthew williams again smashing it as per usual so credit to that man i think that's a lancy foe yeah awesome and then we quickly read over the yeah again one of the best dress designers out yeah looks a fucking amazing boom bang bang definitely been intermittent fasting and do a couple of sit-ups and kettlebell swings um and then quickly read over the review i thought this bit was quite nice here it says yeah above us um this is for the review for the alix 4 2020 show it says above us drone wind and twisted and whirl this motor is producing enough uh, upper rough to blow stance of the ostrich feather collars worn okay they're collars worn by the models to adhere to lips um at our feet another drone this one on wheels clinked and clanked as the forward and reverse to ensure the shots were allowed for lingering glances at the split toe contra color women's wear heels all three really nice and a mono boot and a blunky contoured eva foam puddle boot that was updated with a similar piece and first launched a few seasons back really i didn't i don't remember seeing that the models walked in a slow burning snare rattled beat by filthy who had put on an original composition together after receiving images of the show and venue and this the decadently re re uh, decorated but near derelict church on the edge of town in a town named saint victor and 40 martyrs so an original score by filthy madness in it let's quickly play this and see what it sounds like lower this found a little bit i want to hear what this sounds like actually i'm not gonna lie oh that sounds good in it yeah that sounds good that sounds good not going to let's continue quickly the collection was consistent with those uh past prices and so parisian promenades in the striking contrast between the masculine and the feminine silhouettes those in the menswear including a musician destroy lonely were layered um stature with shipping and puffer over technical mid layers of voluminous knits and pvc pants pvc pants i didn't see them oh those pvc okay cool um sometimes alongside short over pant layering um placed against long top coats and bulky bolstered shoulders all making for an ex exaggeratingly weighty and visual protective carapage and i think there's a quote here somewhere where i liked about him it says here thinking of the long gap between Alex's last show and this one we wondered if williams had proceeded um sorry had processed any input from clients about their evolving taste and he says i wish i had more time to spend with the clientele and understand them a little bit better but i honestly just make clothes that i feel that are desirable so maybe it sounds a bit sh selfish or narcissistic but i'm just making things that i like and hopefully other people will like them too that's just how i move it's interesting that he said that about narcissism because you've got obviously um 
Playboy Carty's tour was called Narcissist, who is meant to be his twin and somebody who he rates highly and they're meant to have a close relationship. Um, do you remember that video of uh, Matthew talking about how the album Holo Red is a classic and we all kind of doubted him and the album comes out, we all panic, myself myself included, and then a couple months later, we're all saying it's the best thing since sliced bread. So he's saying Narcissist, Playboy Carty is saying Narcissist. Recently, the um, Kanye West feature, the Kanye West track feature in the game called Easy also has a line where he says he's a narcissist. So it's a f common theme going around these guys at the moment. But I do like this kind of phraseology and it's something that you only get from people from streetwear. And I think that's a kind of um, an outlook and a kind of ethos when it comes to making clothes, I think has essentially taken over this industry and has put these guys at the top, top of the game. Um, it says here, it's here, it says, um, but I honestly just make clothes that I feel are desirable right just making clothes for yourself, for yourself maybe you've got an idea of who your client is in your head or you're designing for basically another version of yourself but you're not basically going and to and fro from the trends that happen in, in the industry and what's hot and what's not no you just kind of got a singular code or a singular kind of idea and theme and over time you just kind of iterate it differently similar to what Rick Owens does right um it's essentially the same collection fine-tuned again and again and again and again and again obviously different inspirations you know there to pull different things or many different shapes or whatnot but in terms of overall what you present is sort of the same thing again and again and again so i love all that stuff um to say yeah so maybe it sounds selfish or narcissistic but I just that i just like making things that i like and hopefully other people will like them too that's just how i move so yeah big up matthew williams definitely his strongest collection for alix so far i'm a big fan of it um can't wait to see those boots in the store definitely gonna attempt to purchase them myself probably won't get them successfully but you know you never know until you try. You never know until you try.